The next scenes found in the text format file explain how to include formulas made with LaTeX. However, that will be explained in the next video. So we'll move to the object's positions theme. I want you to know the Euler Tour page, which I could simply describe as a Manimal line version. It was created by one of the Manim developers. To use it, you only have to register. It's totally free. It has some limitations, since you cannot edit the files in the Manimleaf folder, and for now, you can only export videos in low resolution. It is a project that's still in development. Even so, it is an excellent tool for all those who are learning Manim. The process to render the animations is the same as with the terminal. In this rectangle, you enter the name of the .py file where the codes are found. And in this other box, you type the name of the scene you want to render. For example, to render the warp square scene, I simply put its name in the box, making sure that the .py file is correct. I save the changes and I click on render scene. Let's create another file for this tutorial. Use the name you want. Just make sure you have the extension .py. The main inversion this web is using is the most recent, so the first line is different from the one we knew, but it does exactly the same as the previous one. Manim was created using oriented object programming. This way of programming has the characteristic of being able to create objects and modify their properties throughout the program. And you can also create objects derived from other objects. The conventional format for changing ownership of an object is as follows. First, write the name of the object, dot, then the name of the function that will modify the properties and parenthetically the parameters that will be modified. However, there are also functions that, instead of modifying the properties, extract or return the properties of an object in order to assign them to other objects. We will see examples of both functions below. The first object different from the texts that we are going to learn to use is the dot. To assign an object of the dot type to a variable is done the same as with the texts, only the text map object command is changed by dot. The first property that we are going to learn to modify is the position. There are two types of properties, the absolute ones and the relative ones. There are two types of absolute positions, the positions on the sides of the screen and the positions in the corners. To place an object on the sides of the screen, use the function to edge. And in parentheses is placed the direction of the side of the screen. There are four predefined directions, which are up, down, left, and right. For example, if we want to place an object on the top of the screen, then we use to edge up. To place it at the bottom is to edge down, on the left side to edge left, and the right side is to edge right. If we want to place the object in the corners, then the to corner command is used, and in parentheses, some of these four predefined directions are written. As an exercise, I recommend you to try all the combinations.
To bring the objects closer to the edges of the screen, you have to modify the buff parameter. The smaller, the closer it will be to the edge. These positions are the simplest. Now let's see the relative positions. To better understand the relative positions, I have created a grid that will help you to better position yourself on the screen. Copy from line 4 to line 92 and paste it after the from line. To be able to add the grid is very simple, save it in a variable using the screen grid command. You can modify the number of columns using the following format. The first command that we will use for the relative position is move to. This command can be used in two ways. The first is to locate an object on the screen, taking as reference the center of the screen. That is, if we want to locate an object in the coordinate 1, 2, we can do it in two ways. The clearest is to use a linear combination of the directions we have already seen, once in right and twice in up. or we can define a vector as an array using the following format. If we wanted to place the object in the position minus 3, comma minus 2, then the idea remains the same. If we want to place an object in the geometric center of another, then we write between the parentheses of the move to the name of that object. In the example, I'll place a text in position minus 3, 2 and move the point to that direction. If we want to take as reference the geometric center of the text and move it 5 units to the right, then the following code is used. First, we write the name of the object we are taking as a reference and write the command dot getCenter. GetCenter does not modify any parameter. What it does is extract the coordinates of the objects to use them as a reference. After the getCenter, then we can add the position vector we want. We see how there is an exact distance of 5 units between the geometric center of both objects. The next two commands, unlike move2, does not take as reference the geometric center of the object, but the edges. So this command will never overlap two objects, it will only place them contiguously. For example, if we want to imitate the command we just saw with move2, then the format is as follows. First goes the name of the file that we take as reference, and then follows the edge to which we are going to make reference, that is, the right side, the left, up or down, and in the buff parameter the separation between the objects is indicated. So, if we compile this code, then the space we are going to see will be between the edges of both objects, not between the geometric centers.
The last relative position command is shift, which is the simplest. Shift takes as reference the previous position to an object before being moved. We can understand this better with the next animation. What we are indicating is to position the dot object in the 1, 1 coordinate. Then it waits a second, then moves one unit to the right, then it waits another second and moves back to the right. This subject of the positions can be a little confusing, so I recommend you to play with the values and try to predict the results to gain a greater understanding. To rotate objects, the rotate command is used. If we want to rotate an object taking as reference the geometric center, then we simply write the angle in radians. Also, you can also use degrees with the following format. In case of using a point as a reference, then we must modify the parameter about point. In this parameter, we enter the coordinates of the point we want to take as a reference. To flip an object as if were seen in a mirror, then the flip command is used, and in parentheses the direction of the reference axis for the reflection. Finally, we will see how to change the sources of a file. To do this, you must use latex commands. By default, we can use six types of sources. In further videos, I will teach you how to add more. The sources are Times Roman, the one that comes by default, Italics, Typewriter, Bold, and two others shown here. The range of the scope of the code is indicated between the keys, so the change of font will only be applied to the text inside those keys. The last scene of text format has the code comments from these sources. And so we finish the first section of the course. In the next video we will learn to create formulas in LaTeX, and how to add them to Manim. So even if you know LaTeX, I recommend you not to skip it.